Hello, my name is Carlos Torres, and I welcome you to the Back Nine Report, where every week Fred Alvader and I check in on the world of golf to bring you the latest news, insights, analysis, interviews, recaps, previews. Hey, we cover anything and everything golf. In other words, if it happened in golf, we have it for you. And today, Fred, we're going to be talking uh, the AIG Women's Open. What a tournament. You know what? It was really interesting. I was just going to watch a little bit of it this morning, and I really got engrossed in it. So I watched pretty much the whole uh, the whole four hours. Uh, I was doing some other stuff, of course, but but I I really enjoyed it. There were a lot of players in the mix. Uh, we were texting back and forth the whole time. Uh, Minji Lee posted early. It was it was really really interesting. It was a good tournament. It was good, and uh, one thing that we can say for definitely there is that the wind took off uh, at Carnoustie, and that's when. Trouble happens and a lot of players go like, oh, my God, this is going to be it. But, you know, best in the women's game did everything they could to still deliver a drama. And that was it. What we got. There was as many as six players holding the lead early uh, at the AIG Women's Open Sunday. And, and that's when I started saying this is going to be a thrilling finish. And it was. I mean, it stayed bunched up to the finish there in sunny Scotland when Anna Nordfist outlast them all. You know, at the age of 34, she's not just a spring chicken. You know, she is uh, in golf years, she's advanced, right? But anyway, she broke a streak of what was nine consecutive first-time winners. And for her, it ends a personal victory drought that stretched back 1,435 days when she won the 2017 Amundi Avian Championship in a playoff. Norvis played Clint Carnoustie's tough four finishing holes in an even part. She carved a three under 69, one by one at 12 under, and earned her third different major title. She won her first major shortly after turning pro in 2009, what was now known, what is now known as the KPMG Women's PGA. She becomes the third European woman to, uh, to win three or more majors, joining Anna, Annika Sorikstam with 10 and Laura Davis, who has four. Uh, we have to talk, talk about Nana Quartz, Quartz Madsen because she came into the 72nd hole tied with Norquist, but she suffered a heartbreaking double bogey on that taxing 18 that included a sh shocking chank from a greenside bunker, which she hit with that second shot. And uh, she admitted to you know, she said, I, I was nervous all day, trying not to make any mistakes while making good shots. And then 18 happened. And it, it happened for a lot of other players as well. Okay. It's not only you, Nana. So John I, I Vandeveld think, come to mind. <laughs> yeah. I, it's, it's, that's, that's like the most <laughs> horrific memory for somebody. Right. But anyway, uh, Georgia Hall, uh, demonstrated again what a Lynx master she is. She won the 2018 uh, Women's Open. She set the early clubhouse mark at 11 under, uh, thanks to a final round of 67 that included two Eagles. Uh, she finished runner-up alongside uh, Sweden's Madeline Sackstrom and American Lisette Salas. You know, Sackstrom bogeyed the last hole. Uh, Salas, uh, while well, she bogeyed that last hole, Salas did have a solid chance at a birdie to get to 12 under, but she didn't. Uh, kudos to Scottish amateur, and I'm sure that Kieran Clark is really thrilled about Louise Duncan, the 2021 RNA's women's amateur champion. She shot 72 and tied for 10th, delighting the local hearty crowds there in her major debut. Mark her best finish by, by, an, by an amateur since Michelle Wee and Louise Tall, they both placed in the top 10 in 2005. You know, Duncan, who now heads to the Curtis Cup in Wales, she said that she thought she might crumble a wee beat in such a stage, but I gotta say, she managed to hold her nerve. I think she's just gonna cruise in the, in the Curtis Cup. Uh, but Fred, back to Norquist, uh, the, the biggest hurdle in her coming back to the winner's circle was about with mononuclosis that began in the summer of 2017. She said that a lot of people didn't know how hard that battle was back that for three years, she felt like she had no energy at all. So this uh, break with the COVID-19 pandemic seems to have benefited her because it forced her to slow down, okay? Uh, so now we see her back on time, getting back to her prime. Uh, congratulations to her, another player that we have to say, we'll talk about the other players, but I'll turn it back to you now. 
Uh, great win by, by, by Anna. She had that never quit attitude that really paid off. Well, Anna Narcos has been a world-class player for a long time. Um, you know, she's, she's got a family, uh, you know, she's does all that stuff and still plays great golf. She's one of the elite uh, ball strikers, her iron. She's a great iron player. Um, and, and that's, you know, if, if she has a weakness, it's maybe chipping around the greens, but she on, on uh, link style golf course, just takes care of that. She just putts. So, you know, don't have to worry about the chipping. No, no, no problem there. Um, you know what? Her first win on the LPGA was a major in 2009. It was the McDonald's LPGA. Her last win was in 2017. You mentioned it was the Evian. That was a major. And now here we are in 2021, she wins another major. This is her third major. You know, she's moving right up into elite category on the, on, in women's golf. In Europe, you know, she's got to be one of the highest ranked top five Europeans ever. You got Annika, you got Laura Davies, who else you got uh, with that kind of major championship. So, uh, you know, Anna Nork was great player. I, I was you know, I when she kind of went south, there she had those two severe lip outs, severe lip outs. I mean, they came back at her, and I thought, well, this could do her in. But you know, it's just kind of like she buckled down, boom, she birdies the next hole. You know, it's all about the comeback. What do you do on the next shot? So um, yeah, it was that was good stuff. It, she was fun to watch. I really enjoyed it. Really felt bad for uh, Mazden on the 18th hole. But uh, her second shot really set up the, the bad bunker shot. Um, she came out of that second shot big time and pushed it and it got into the back into that bunker and downhill, really, it was really a tough shot. She was in a bad situation there. And, um, you know, it was a shame, but, you know, that's going to happen. Even good players are going to do that sometimes. So, um, you know, I can understand that. And, and her shot from the fairway was over 200 yards, a seventh second hole of a major. She's tied for first. All that stuff just adds up finally after being out there for four hours battling. So, um, you know, she'll learn from it. And uh, we could see her, you know, uh, winning majors and winning more tournaments. This could really be a big turning point for her. Um, nice thing about um, Anna Norquist, I'm going to see her in uh, a little over a week, Carlos. What do you do? Where are you going to see her? At the Solheim Cup. <laughs> she will. She will. And before we, we, we talk a little bit about that, I want to just cover some of the players that had top top uh, finishes. I mean, Jay Lee uh, looked like she was going to be right there. You know, one of the things. She was I the early you, story for sure. She, I, she, and set, I gotta give she you, set the bar. She did, but I got to give it to you. you. You texted to me. If she gets to 12 under par, she wins. Guess what was the winning score, huh? 12 on the par. So whoever got there, you got it. You, you had it right there. Unfortunately, she didn't. She was at 11 on their par. She got that bogey. Uh, and like you mentioned off, uh, off camera, she got lucky that she got a bogey only in that 18. Um, Nana finished T5, T5 with Minji. Pani Tevatanakit, another player that had a great final round. And she definitely is playing to her strengths there. She was a T7. Uh, Maria and Aria Yutaniger in nine and T10. Luis Duncan, like we mentioned, a T10 also. Uh, I got to mention this girl, Stephanie Kiriaku from uh, Australia. She really has been playing really, really well. And I, I was impressed by her. She had a T13 also along with Leona McGuire. Big shout out for her with Brooke Henderson. Yali Mino, Nelly Corda. There was a big uh, pack there with Seyun Kim. So a uh, great finish there. Lexi Thompson was T20. Uh, anybody else? Uh, Lydia Ko was early in the tournament there, but seems to have gone down. I mean, she was 72, 71, 72, 71. So, but it looked some time like she was right there at the uh, at the top of the leaderboard, but she just couldn't finish. It was just a lot of up, up and downs for her. Stacey Lewis was, was a T29. So anybody else that caught your eye on the finishes? Really, uh, Lydia Ko really surprised me. I was watching her scores earlier in the week and uh, she was right there, you know, not that far off, but just couldn't quite get over the hump this week. I don't know, something was missing. missing. I'm not sure what. Minji Lee, she was the early story, though. Um, she was really fun to watch. She gave her a lot of camera time early in the coverage. Um, yeah, the, 
the comments I want. Uh, Salas was the uh, low American. Uh, you know, she really likes this women's open thing. She finished sixth in 2013. She was runner up in 2019. Uh, she's been on the LPGA since 2012. Do you know she only has one win? Uh, you know, she's been a quality player for a long time. I, I, I look that up. I think, that can't be right. She has to have more than one win. No, uh, very consistent hours. She's got 33 career top tens, five of which have come in majors. So on tough golf courses where par is, is important, is relevant, uh, that's, she's, she's that kind of a player. She comes into the week, number 14 on the money list, number 149 in driving. So she's not very long. And if you saw her on some of those long par fours, she's hitting hybrids or fairway woods into those greens. That's a real disadvantage. Uh, but she's number seven in driving accuracy. So she doesn't miss many fairways. Lexi was in the mix faded on Sunday. Again, this is becoming a, a thing with her, right? 74 plus two. Uh, drop clear down to uh, T20. Georgia Hall, I, you know, I love this girl. I love to watch her play. I, for me, Georgia Hall and Lydia Ko are like two of the classiest women on the LPJ Tour. I love to watch them. Jin Young Ko, probably the other, I, I put her in that class too. Just they're smooth, you know, just they play like effortlessly. It's really fun to watch them. And I don't know if you watched it or saw it, noticed it today, but Georgia was hitting a lot of knockdowns in the wind, keeping, I mean, there wasn't a lot of wind at, at Scotland this week. The, the conditions, the weather was beautiful. It was nice as you'll ever going to see it in Scotland for sure. But she was still flighting the ball down and, you know, she's not the longest either. So like on that long par uh, three, the 224 yard par three, she was taking like a three iron hitting it to the in front of the green and letting it run up on there, letting it scoot up. And she, she finessed that shot to keep it low. So it would run. I, I love that. I loved watching that. That's one of the cool things about watching Lynx golf is seeing those kind of shots. So Georgia seems to raise her game for the, uh, for the women's open. It's really important to her. Um, and she was in contention, ended up tied with Sagstrom and Salas for, uh, for runner up. Who is Louise Duncan? Well, Carlos, she's 21 years old. <clears throat> she's 21 years old from Scotland, still an amateur. She's still in college over there in Scotland at Sterling University. She won the British Women's Amateur in June. Her future is very bright. Uh, she ended up finishing T10. Loved watching her play today. I texted you. I, I watched almost every shot she hit. She was playing with no fear. Grab that driver and rip it down there. You know, pot bunkers, no problem. You know, just get it going. It was it was really fun to watch her play. You know, the innocence of youth. These other women are afraid. They're laying back and playing safe. No, she's ripping that thing down there. It was really fun to watch. Um, we're going to be hearing a lot more from her in the future. She's going to be somebody. you got to put her on your radar because when she decides to turn pro in another year, two years, or whenever, uh, she's going to be somebody we want to watch. One other thing I just want to say about the AJ Women's Open, uh, um, Carnoustie was a star. Um, I was a little bit concerned how the women were going to handle it, if it was going to make them look bad or that, kind of, but no, they had it set up just right. They had some short par fours, they had some long par fours. The par fives were, were, were doable. They were birdieable. Um, you know, the, the, the rough was wispy. Uh, it had some tall fescue, but it was not an issue. They could get out of it. Uh, the bunkering was the real challenge there and then the burn. But uh, other than that, I, I thought it was great. Uh, I loved watching. I really enjoyed watching the AIG Women's Open this year, Carlos. Really enjoyed it a lot. Oh, definitely. I agree with you. And it was it was such a show. The women always seem to find a way to 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 bring the best on it. You have something else you want to add? Yeah, I got one more thing. I just wanted to mention. I just happened to think of it. Um, the AIG and the RNA raised the purse this year. You know, we talked about that in our preview show that it was a, it's one of the bigger purses and it was important because uh, Popov won 675,000 last year for first place. Well, this year they raised the purse by 1.3 million to 5.8 million. And uh, Annika is going to get, or uh, Anna Nordk was going to get 870,000 for first place finish. You know, that's 220,000 more than last year. And they're going to increase it by at least a million again next year. So you're going to have the winner getting close to a million dollars, if not a million dollars for first place. That's going to be huge, Carlos. 
this is a real positive sign for women's professional golf. Pay equity has long been an issue. Um, AIG and the RNA are being commended for working to raise that bar and get these lady professional golfers the rewards they deserve, Carlos. They do, and uh, definitely that, that was one of the biggest stories uh, to look forward to. And uh, hey, hopefully the other majors and the whole uh, tournaments from the LPGA just follow suit because the ladies, like I was saying, they, they always managed to bring a great show to us. And uh, uh, now what you were saying, you know, uh, just a quick note on the Solheim Cup for Anna Nordqvist, the bonus reward for winning is an automatic stop, uh, spot now on the European Solheim Cup team because now she's going to be making her seventh straight appearance in the event. Uh, her victory moved her to number 16 in the world, which means she earns one of the four spots available from the women's world rankings. She joins Sofia Papa from Germany, Charlie Hall from England, uh, Carlota Siganda from Spain. The two that are automatic because of the Solheim Cup points are Emily K. Peterson from Denmark and Georgia Hall from England. Uh, so tomorrow, Katrina Matthew will be announcing her six captain picks. For the Americans, there was no movement in the final qualifying event. So Nelly Corda, world number one and player and Olympic champion, leads the seven players who qualify through Solheim Club points. She joins Daniel Kang, Ali Ewing, Austin Ernest, and Lexi Thompson, Jessica Corda, and Megan Kang. And Lisette Salas, who you, you mentioned, is a runner-up in two majors this year, okay? And former Augusta National Women's Amateur Champion Jennifer Kupcho, they earned the two spots from the world ranking of players not already on the team. And Patty Hurst also will be announcing her three picks tomorrow. So uh, you're going to be there uh, September 4th to the 6th in Inverness Club in Toledo, Ohio. Uh, Europe is the defending champion, so... How about these players that are right now uh, already qualified? Really happy to see Jennifer Cupcho get one of the automatic bids. I, we've been watching her since uh, her performance at the uh, Augusta National Women's uh, Amateur uh, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, and she's really progressing and becoming a really solid professional. I look for her to have a really big year next year. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised to see her do really well in the Solheim Cup and in springboard right into next year. Uh, and have a really big year next year. I think she's going to be one of the next big American stars for sure. Um, yeah, I, yeah I, I, she's going to be like the only uh, rookie among all these automatics too. So, and as, as we were talking before we went on air, uh, it'll be interesting to see what, who Patty Hearst chooses with her picks. You know, does she go for more experience uh, like a Stacey Lewis or somebody like that? Or does she choose one of the younger players to give them experience? Yeah, that'll that'll be interesting to see what she does. Um, you know, I, I the the uh, also what Katrina Matthew does for the uh, for the for the European team. My goodness, she's got a lot of people to choose from. Obviously, uh, Madsen and Sagstrom, uh, you know, acquitted themselves quite well at the Open, and they played pretty good. So I would say they'd probably be in there. You mentioned Le Leona McGuire. And, I, you know, maybe we'll have a show. We'll talk about this later in the week once we get all the all the info together and we'll, we'll, we'll go into it more. But I can't wait for the Solheim Cup, Carl. I cannot wait. It's counting down. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I really don't envy Patty Hertz because there's only three players that she has to pick. And you mentioned some names, Stacey Lewis. Uh, are you going to go for the veterans like Stacey Lewis? You have an Angela Stanford around there. Uh, or are you going to go with the youngsters like Yalini No, which you, she's playing amazing, and that's a future She's playing star. great right now. So playing she's great. playing really, really well. You have Angel Jin, who was in the previous uh, Solheim Cup. She's not that far off. Uh, you have, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, Brittany Altamere. Uh, you have Marina Alex. So many. I think Marina, I think Marina Alex is on. I, I think she's one of the picks. I, she's very consistent. She can play, you know, she'd be great in twosomes um, or foursomes. I mean, I, I think that uh, I think she's on the team. I'll be surprised if she's not picked. Okay, we'll see. I mean, uh, it's, it's going to be tough and interesting because, uh, and we'll talk about it at last, uh, I mean, at length in that show. But definitely, uh, I, I would push for, yeah, leave me know to be there. And of course, uh, you, if you're going to pick a veteran, it should be Stacey Lewis. But after that, Maybe, like you're saying, the Marina Alex should be there as well. 
But we'll see what happens uh, tomorrow. We'll get that answer. And shortly after, next week, we'll be talking about this a little bit at length. So anyway, any final thoughts before we close the show? No, it was just a great, as I said earlier, I really enjoyed it today. I, 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 I've watched probably less golf this year than I think I've ever watched. Uh, Pardon because of how we're doing the show now. We, we don't talk about every event. Uh, we just trying to pick more topics and, and, uh, but I really did. The weather was great. I love Carnoustie. I'd like to see it someday. And uh, um, it was it was really, really a, a well done event. Well, we thank you for joining us. Remember to subscribe to our channel so you can keep up to date whenever we pick any other topic and keep you up to date with the latest in golf news and information. Also, follow us on Twitter, Back9Report, with the number nine in the middle. Thank you for joining us.